Welcome back to the Student Pilot Cast with another Oshkosh 2022 feature. In this one, we talk to the folks at Infinite Flight, a mobile flight simulator that's really easy to get started with. Here you go, episode 59, Oshkosh 22 feature, Infinite Flight. Chandler Tower, Cherokee 4121 Tango's at Chandler Air Service. We have Sulu, and uh, we'd like a south departure, please. So as you know, most SBC content is audio, but for most of these features that we're doing from Oshkosh, we're going to do video and audio, as there's usually a pretty important visual element to the stuff that we're publishing. So like the other ones that we're releasing around this time, this is being published in both my audio and my video feed, so enjoy it any way that works for you. Obviously, you're listening to the audio feed right now. And you can easily find the video content on our brand new YouTube channel. I'll put a link to this episode in the show notes, but it's also easy to find on the website, studentpodcast.com. Please like and subscribe on the YouTube channel if you watch it there. As this is a brand new channel, I'd love to have you follow us there too. For this one, I caught up with Jay and Laura with Infinite Flight. Now, I haven't been keeping up really with the sim world all that much over the last few years. I do use Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I have some equipment for it, but I haven't really been keeping up with what's going on. That made this discussion really interesting to me. I liked having this chat with Laura and Jay about their mobile flight sim, Infinite Flight, uh, because it was something that was um, new to me and pretty interesting being able to take it with you. Uh, We did tackle the age-old question of, is this a tool or a game? So you'll get to hear their take on that as well. Like I said, this mobile sim is really accessible. It can be used on the go easily, and it has some pretty impressive features like ATC, for flight integration, and and a bunch of other stuff. And there's there's quite a few people that appear to be using this really successfully as both a training aid as well as an additional source of information and experience for someone flying to an unfamiliar place. And to have this available on multiple devices wherever you go, I think could prove really useful. In other words, it doesn't have to take a large desktop workstation with all of the bells and whistles and the GPU and the rudder pedals and the the yoke and all of that stuff to be able to sim and kind of get a taste of what your flight's going to look like. And that sounds pretty cool to me. So, like I said, we'll take a deeper look in this interview of Infinite Flight. Like I said, you'll on the video, if you want to watch that, you'll get some uh, more visuals and you'll get a, a glimpse into what it's like to use the sim. Uh, but for this audio, you'll get the full interview, just like you would get in the video. And uh, we're going to do the same thing on a bunch of the other OSH 22 features that I'm releasing. So you'll get audio and video. And for the most part, it'll be the same, but, you know, slightly different because the video will obviously have some additional information. So as we get into this, uh, just so you know, Laura is the CEO and co-founder of Infinite Flight and Jay is their digital marketing lead. And he's a really big enthusiast for the flight simulator as well. And so as I put air quotes around it, it's a job for him. It doesn't really seem like it. Um, He seems to really be enjoying it. So I hope you, I hope you like the interview. Here you go. Welcome again to Oshkosh 2022, everyone. Um, I'm pleased here to be with Infinite Flight uh, here in the Sea Hangar, I believe we're in, right? And this is an interesting company, believe it or not. I've been in aviation since 2008. I've been a student pilot in 2008. I've been flying. I had never heard of Infinite Flight until Jay reached out to me. So I want to I want to find out about it. Um, I did read your article, Jay, that you wrote about learning to fly with it. And, of course, I downloaded it and did a little checking. It's very interesting. But I wanted to start out first by introducing you guys. You are Jay, and you're in marketing, right? And this is Laura, and you're the CEO and co-founder, correct? That's right. That's correct. All right. Perfect. So tell me, either one of you, tell me a little bit about Infinite Flight. 
Yeah. Okay, sure. So Infinite Flight's a simulator, a mobile simulator for phones and tablets. It's available in um, the App Store for free uh, and also on Google Play. We have um, multiplayer, uh, dozens of aircraft. I think we have close to a thousand aircraft and livery combinations at this point. Um, and we're going to be competing with a seminar over there. Um, and uh, we have ATC on our uh, multiplayer servers as well. Yeah, I'm going to find out more about that later. But before we do that, I want to go to Laura and find out how did it get, how did it all get started, and when did that happen? So I started when I was a student in engineering school in 2004 in France. Uh, I was working on a video game with my friends uh, as a school project, and I was tasked to work on the uh, physics of objects. And there was one of the samples uh, that I was working with, like a, a test thing to learn how to use the, the application. Uh, you could just play with it, uh, and I realized, like, if I put forces around that object and base them on the uh, angle of attack and airspeed, that would make a plane fly. So I figured, like, let's load a plane model, make, like, physical wings on it, and apply forces, and lo and behold, it worked. So this is how it all got started, and then I, it was a passion project for me. And then I met my co-founder, Philippe, in school, and then he moved to California. I joined him uh, to work at NVIDIA. And then after a few years of, you know, playing with this, uh, this experimental sim, uh, I reached out to him, like, hey, you want to work with me on this because we could make something out of this. Uh, and then the mobile part came because it was around, like, 2009, 10, when the iPhone was starting to get you know, really popular. So we figured, let's go on, on uh, mobile. Uh, and we shipped on iPhone in 2012. And the first version was Windows Phone in 2011. So it's been uh, 10 years now, more than 10 years. Interesting. Started on Windows Phone. Yeah. That is really interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was a big uh, Windows Phone advocate back then. There was a great platform. I know what happened to that platform, but um, that is interesting. One thing I was going to ask is, um, I believe it is only iOS today. Do, do you have it on Android? Android too, yeah. We shipped Android a year and a half later in 2013. Feature for feature, the same? Yeah, it's the same. The code, since it's, um, it's in C Sharp, so it's a .NET you know, uh, infrastructure, uh, everything is the same, except maybe some, you know, the stuff that we have to interface with uh, the device, obviously, like some of the inputs and the way we create the window and all that is different. But for the user, it's all the same. Using the same model in the background then? Yeah, same physics, same, uh, everything is the same. Like, as you, when you use it, it behaves exactly the same way. Excellent. There's the odd subtlety uh, even between using a phone and a tablet on iOS. Like you get haptic feedback on the phone, but it doesn't exist on the iPad, that kind of thing. But otherwise, there's no difference. Thank you. Um, So like I said, I hadn't heard of it before. So one of my overreaching questions, especially uh, talking to Jay briefly about how he used it as part of his training, is this a game or is this a tool? I, 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 when people ask me if it's a game, I say it's a serious game if they're in the gaming part. But we see it as a tool. Like it can be seen as both a game and a tool depending on how you use it. Uh, if you're a pilot and you want to discover, like if you're going to, a, to fly in a place that you're unfamiliar with, it's a great way to get, and get a picture of what it's going to look like, especially if it's near, near like mountains or you have to cross a canyon or something that you're really not comfortable with. You can just go and get like a side picture like, okay, this is how it looks like. Maybe like 1,500 over the, you know, the, the ridge is a little too, like, you know, too low. And you can plan a little higher because you have the, the picture of what it looks like uh, in this particular situation. So it's, it can be used as a tool. For me, it's, uh, it's a nice combo of everything. Like, it's work now for me, but it's also fun. And it's also a tool. I use it to, uh, well, I'll give a flight chops a little plug. I was... Um, flying with Steve into Lock Haven, Pennsylvania, so he could pick up an airplane. And Lock Haven has a mountain on one side of the airport and uh, rising terrain on the other side. So naturally, I fired up Infinite Flight, and I flew what I thought would probably be our approach into Lock Haven and realized, yeah, I'm really not comfortable with, well, I can't be on that side. We're going to follow the river in, and then I'm really not comfortable with this, so I'm going to plan my approach pretty carefully as we come in there, and it was uh, really beneficial in that way. It takes couch flying to a, another level, you know? And even 
We have four flight integration as well. So for pilots, um, if you're on the same Wi-Fi network, you can use four flight to practice new features or whatever. Um, and you can see the route in four flight with your 3D view, but until you actually are sitting there flying it, you know, it's, uh, it's just different and it, it feels different. Uh, and Loris had the same experience flying in mountains too. Yeah, I did like the one, I was using this as an example often is, I picked up an aircraft from uh, Hood River in, uh, in Oregon and I had to ferry to San Francisco, to Palo Alto, and there was two routes, either like via Highway 1, so near the coast, or through like what would be the Central Valley, like the extension of the Central Valley. And I wanted to go like the straightest route, but I think about half an hour to an hour into the flight, uh, playing an infinite flight, I realized the terrain was kind of high. Uh, and I had mountains on both sides, it was really deserted. And I figured, like, I don't feel comfortable. The plane's brand new. What if something happens? There's literally nothing around me except a bunch of, like, small airports with no services. I'll be stuck somewhere in the middle. Uh, so I figured, like, let's go to the, you know, safest route on the, on the Highway 1, which is what I did. I was pretty happy with that. It's also a prettier route, right? Yeah, it was actually pretty nice. It was, it was comfortable, and I like going up, so I went, like, to you know, flight level, you know, 1, 5, 0, like, yeah. Like it was pretty high, you know, comfortable. It was, it was good. It was fun. So, was the vision originally um, to be a combination of a tool and a game, or was the vision originally more like game, and you realized, hey, this could be used as a tool? I mean, it's you know, like the the, the model that I had was like it's based heavily. Like my inspiration was Flight Unlimited Two back in like yeah. 1997, 98. I loved the, the way they had the physics, they had the, the whole design uh, made. And I use it as a training tool. Like for me, it was like a way to keep my head in the game when I wasn't flying. Um, and I, this is, I, I never saw it really as a game. We don't have, like when you have an F-18, you can't shoot rockets. Like if you want this, go to some other game. You know, we're just, we're just about the realism of physics. Like if you fly a 172 heavy loaded at Aspen on a 40 degree, uh, Celsius day, you're not taking off. It's going to stay on the ground in ground effect, and then you're going to crash at the end of the runway. We 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 respect the laws of physics, so it's really not an arcade game. So it's really up to the person playing if they want it to be as a game or as a, a training platform or as a tool. It's really up to them. I'm going to get into the ATC and a little bit more into the four flight integration in just a minute, but most of my uh, audience. Not most, let me correct that. A lot of my audience are either student pilots or prospective student pilots would like to be someday. Um, what would you want them to know about Infinite Flight? Um, well, the, it's a good question for me to answer because I newly PPL'd as of a uh, year and a half ago. So Laura and Philippe, our other co-owner, um, Said, I said, I'm thinking about doing this. And they said, yes, please, we, we want pilots on the team. And they said, while you're, while you're at it, I'll figure out objectively what the, the proper use for you is for the, during training for infinite flight. So I did, and that was in the article that I shared with you. But really for me, um, so in Canada where I trained, um, we can't use for flight during our training. It's all paper charts, E6B, paper nav log, everything, paper weight and balance, which I think Laura and I will argue about this, but I think go, having the, that foundation is, for me, it was really important because it helped me understand what the, uh, why I was doing what I was doing, but I'm really bad at math. My 12-year-old my son is much better at doing math in his head than I am. He's faster at it. So for me, the perspective of doing math in the cockpit was really daunting, uh, doing calculations and things. Of course, now I use ForeFlight. Um, but I, I have that foundation because what I would do is I would do my calculations and then I would launch in a 172 in infinite flight with my paper chart on the floor. Don't tell my instructor, but maybe for flight just to kind of verify what was going on, which was actually nice. Um, and we have real world win winds aloft and like Laura's, Laura said, density, altitude and all of that. So I would launch, I would have my VFR uh, checkpoints and I would say, okay, here's my set heading point. Here's my first checkpoint, which is near, you know, Highway 400 and the train tracks. And I would say, okay, it took me this long 
and this is my true airspeed and all of that. And then I could do use my E6B and figure out, okay, it took me this long and I did 10 miles. So, you know, what's my, what, how long, what's my updated ETA and what's my fuel burn and all of that. So that was the really practical help for me because I flew my actual cross country three or four times in the sim and then I went and did it. So my workload and my task saturation felt, to me, felt lower when I was doing it by myself, no instructor, uh, E6B map, fumbling around with that was a little bit less daunting. Yeah, That's very interesting. I, um, I wish I would have had something like that when I was training back in 2008. I was also very analog back then, but that was out of necessity. It was a long time ago. And, and the, you know, the, the, the level of couch flying when you've got something that you can literally just pull out of your pocket or you're probably already using a tablet for your ground school or your, uh, your, e- your EFB or whatever, it, you've got it already. There's no barrier to entry. You just download the Infinite Flight for free and you've got it. Excellent. Um, okay, let's talk about air traffic control integration really quick. Um, which one of you would like to give me an overview? <laughs> um, so we have... Um, <clears throat> It's not based on voice, uh, so it's pre-made commands. So you basically start the application. Uh, if you want to be a pilot, you start the application in live mode, what we call you know, live mode. You select a server experience. So we have three different types of servers. One is casual, where you can fly. There's no rules. You can just do whatever you want. And only comms are uh, AT, like a unicom. So you talk to you know, the CTAF frequency and broadcast your intentions. But it's, it's sometimes a little chaotic because obviously there's people practicing there. Then we have the training server, which is like a hybrid of uh, expert and casual, where you can make some mistakes, but there's automated checks so you can taxi too fast and you don't you know, do inverted flights over, the, over an airport. And then the, the, uh, and you, can also have, you can also act as a controller, as a practice controller there. And we have the expert server, where we have Tyler, who's um, managing their ATC community. He's uh, they're basically training uh, to have proper experience uh, at different levels of you know airports and uh, the size of airports, and they uh, they open frequencies like we have uh, areas that we open every day, uh, like hubs, so people can do flights. You know, there's like themes that we're, we're going to open like California or New, like the East Coast, uh, and the controllers are. are um, starting the app in a different mode, and they can decide if they want to be approach, departure, uh, tower, they can also set the ATIS, uh, ground, uh, we also have center frequencies as well. And the, what they do is basically try to manage the flow of aircraft, because we sometimes have a lot of traffic coming in, probably more than real life, uh, because when we have events, we're talking like 500 aircraft leaving or arriving in airport within the hour, maybe less than an hour. Sounds familiar. Yeah, so... <laughs> So that's why we had, what's funny is that we, we had issues, at the beginning we didn't have SID stars or approaches, we just assumed people would just do it right, but now we have SIDs and stars, so we have, if you're a controller at an airport, you can set the ATIS, you can coordinate with the, um, with the approach and say, listen, I'm having those runways available, it'd be nice if you could have the, this, this uh, star uh, recommended in the ATIS and this one, and, and then they kind of manage this together um, but when, they, when it's very heavy traffic. So it's um, it's pretty cool, and the way the way you interact with with uh, the controllers is by using pre-made commands. So it's similar to Flight Unlimited, where you selected uh, you want to talk to tower, you want to say you want to take off, which runway, what's your departure direction, if you want to do touch and go. So all this uh, is done very easily, like it's all accessible with your thumb. And on the controller side, they have about the same things. They can send those messages, and it's like text to speech. Um, so you don't have to worry about talking or being like you know scared of talking to someone and you have pretty good coverage when you open up those areas yeah it's like if you go to the to the active frequencies for a certain region um, there's usually going to be any time of the day uh, between two to ten airports open for the tower and usually a couple of uh, approach frequencies and the approach are kind of sometimes like they're going to come on a on a on a like use case, like use basis, like when when the tower is basically, there's too many p- people coming in, they're gonna send, they have a Discord, they're gonna say, I need an approach at Atlanta because I can't, people are coming in like a little disorganized, I need someone to help manage the flow. So they're gonna spawn and kind of reorganize everybody uh, so that everybody comes in on the approach properly and there's no like crazy traffic. So it's um, 
There's lots of, if you fly today and live, and if you get to that expert server, you need some training like to, to get it. Uh, you, you're pretty much guaranteed any time of the day to have an approach open, at least multiple towers, so you can have a lot of fun. Huh, very interesting. I'll have to try that out. So I'm going to ask you in general in a minute, but for, eight, for air traffic control specifically, are there plans to integrate voice? So the problem with voice is um, the community is like very wide, and uh, we notice that if we don't moderate things, people start insulting one another. So um, it's something we've been thinking about, but also I think it would it would uh, change our rating in the app store because when there's like direct interaction with with people, uh, it makes things a little more difficult. So it's something we're thinking about, but. No immediate plans for that. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And uh, then just in general, what's up next for the app? Um, so we have many things in plan, some things that we can talk about, some that are still like kind of you know, under wraps. Um, we have obviously more planes coming in. We have the F-18 that's, um, that we, we have in demo here that we're going to ship uh, in the next month or so. We have the uh, E-175 that we were kind of redoing. Like Since the, the app is being continuously updated, some of the models that we shipped in 2013, 14, 15 are still there. We still offer access to them, but they're not up to the latest standards. So we're going, to, we're going over all these airplanes and redoing them. So the E-175 is the next one uh, with the F-18. Uh, and then after that, we have uh, a revamp of the graphics engine that we're working on. Hopefully, it can have the, later this year to allow uh, better rendering, better quality. That's gonna, we've, we've seen some screenshots and it looks pretty good so far. So hopefully we can make it work. The difficulty we have compared to like PC Sims is that we run on tablets. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that we have to, that we either can't do or we have to spend way more time optimizing, especially on devices, like low end devices on Android, which have issues sometimes running high performance games. So, and there's other things, but, I can't really talk about them right now. But it's, My job is to rip the mic out of your hand if she starts talking about the wrong thing. Which she's building, she's always building these cool things and wants to share. And we're like, Laura, no, <laughs> we need to keep that one under wraps. But um, the, the, our scenario system that's actually in play on these iPads right now is uh, something that's actually pretty cool in terms of um, opening opening the app up a little more to uh, things like flight schools or. Um, uh, training apps and things like that where they can literally set up um, I've been using the word macro it's like a macro is kind of an old school word but it's you know sort of a, a script for where you can anything we simulate can be a part of this scenario so and then and, and then some like we can uh, have on screen prompts and things like that so if you want to show uh, Regan had a good example um, earlier today where you know things like tracking uh, to and from VORs is a confusing thing for a lot of new pilots, including that's true, including me still. And I've, <laughs> thank goodness, I don't have to do it very often or ever. Um, but uh, you know, you, we can set up a scenario where you're literally inbound or outbound uh, on a VOR and showing the pilot what that looks like and and how they can change what what happens if you change and what the needle does and all that kind of stuff. Change heading and all that. Yeah, it sounds like a great learning tool. Um, be able to do it. Um, anything else that I forgot to ask that I should have asked? Yes, uh, we have uh, two things. Uh, first, you can talk about that after. Uh, I just want to mention all our social media stuff, if that's okay. Uh, we're on all social media at Infinite Flight. Um, you, if you're getting, if you're new to Infinite Flight, um, our YouTube training tutorials are huge. They're um, a really good learning resource. Our user guide uh, is fairly new still, and it's really comprehensive thanks to all of Regan's hard work um, and so that's at infiniteflight.com slash guide. Our community forum if you're into uh, hanging out with other like-minded uh, av geeks and flight simmers um, community.infiniteflight.com I'm guessing you spend some time there Yes, guilty guilty, that's, that's the only reason I, I work here is uh, due to the community so um, yeah, and in fact, I used to have a podcast that was about Infinite Flight, but now that I'm here, I don't really have time. I don't have time for that, yeah. So, I, uh, yeah, get in, uh, get in touch with us. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, and, um, yeah, we hope to have some new uh, student pilots listening in. 
All right, one follow-up to that then. Do you have any idea uh, what your mix of users is, pilots, non-pilots, students? Yeah, I mean, I think I think we're the, the in broad terms, the bell curve of the user is uh, somewhere around 19, 20 years old. Uh, mostly male, but not all. Um, and then we have every end of the spectrum from, you know, very young to uh, very old, to be honest. And... Um, yeah, and it surprises us sometimes who, who's using the app. Uh, we had Buzz Aldrin using the app at one point and tweeting about it. Um, but it's in terms of pilots and non-pilots, um, it's, it's a range. We have uh, real-world uh, airline pilots. Uh, well, we have one on our team, and we have some in our community that uh, prefer to use it to do ATC. And so that's fun for them, and they do it while they're you know in a hotel room on layover. Um, so there's a range, but I, from part of my job and my goal and my dream is to have more pilots discovering and using Infinite Flight to learn and train and chair, chair fly. And um, so that's that's one of the things that I grind away at and uh, talk to people like you to share, spread the word. Perfect. And you were going to add something too, I think, Laura. Just a quick um, mention of the scenery editor. So you know, all the, the ground airports and uh, that we have, is they're made in the app with a team of people that we source from the community. So they're all managing this. We don't even control the, what the airport they, they're making. They just took it up on their own, and they're just grinding away at some airports and adding uh, objects and buildings and all that. And it's all inside the app itself. So the app has another mode, a scenery editor and... and there's a whole process to apply, and uh, there's a review system, so we don't let anyone just do anything because obviously, you know, it needs to be realistic. But it, they've they've made an amazing, uh, like the result is absolutely amazing what they what they've been doing. Amazing things happen when you have a good community, right? So we're trying to empower the community as much as we can because it's it's how things like you know flight sim like flight unlimited. They kind of they had a hard time building a community because they were pretty close, right? You could add things to it, but it's hard to maintain like the self-sustaining uh, kind of energy. Uh, that's why we, we're like fully on the community and trying to open the sim as much as we can with API, with different apps. Cameron over here uh, joined us because I worked in an API to expose the traffic in Infinite Flight, and he, he did uh, an app. He created an app on uh, iOS to show the traffic, like a flight aware for Infinite Flight. And then we're like, hey, you should join us. And then. And then he was still a student, and then, you know, after that he worked more with us, and then now he's full-time with us, so. That's a great story. And a lot, a lot of the people here, Regan is the same. He was a user. Obviously, he was the same. Like, a lot of people that we have here are sourced from the community, and I think it's a great thing because you have the passion uh, to begin with. I, I agree. I, without a community, these types of things just die. Uh, yeah, it's, it's impossible to keep it going. Well, excellent. Thank you both very much for spending some time with me. And uh, I can't wait to kind of use it a little bit more and check it out. So one last thing I wanted to mention, and I don't know, Jay, if you'd have a comment about it. Um, from my research, it looks like it is free to use, uh, but you unlock a whole bunch of features if you um, uh, get a subscription. Do you want to talk about that just briefly? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. So you can download it for free in the App Store or Google Play, uh, where you just search for Infinite Flight. It's easy to find. Um, you get a, a handful of regions to fly in, and we tried to spread those out sort of around the world, South Africa, uh, the Los Angeles, the sort of California area, um, and then uh, a handful of airplanes. And some of the airplanes even uh, are new models that have interactive cockpits and everything. Um, so you get a good selection of things that, uh, and, and all, uh, all of the nav data in those regions is included. Um, we have uh, global nav data that we source from NavBlue. And um, so all of the uh, real-world procedures and all that, that all comes with the app in those regions. So if you subscribe, then you unlock the whole fleet of airplanes, which come, uh, like I said, I, we have almost 1,000 livery and airplane combinations. Um, the whole world global flight uh, in satellite terrain imagery at uh, 15 meter per pixel. Um, and then our multiplayer is the big thing with the ATC. All right. Thank you very much. So there you go. What do you guys think? I'd love to hear from you if you're already using Infinite Flight, and I'd love to know how it's working for you. But if you try Infinite Flight because of this episode, I would sure like to know what you think of it as you introduce yourself to it.
You can always reach out to me directly via email using bill at studentpilotcast.com or on the contact form at the website studentpilotcast.com. You can always reach me on my Twitter as well, and my username is at Bill Will. That's Bravo India Lima Lima, Whiskey India Lima. So I've been really enjoying playing around with Infinite Flight since Jay brought it up to me, and I'm guessing you will too. I love that it's accessible and it's really easy to get going with, and I can definitely see how it would be really useful to use for flight planning purposes as well. So that'll do it for this episode. Please don't forget to look at my other OSH 22 content that's going to be coming out or has already been published. So take a look around for that. It'll be additional video episodes additional audio episodes, and like I said before, uh, all of this content, the video content anyway, will go onto our brand new fledgling YouTube channel that nobody really knows about yet at the publishing of this. So thanks again for listening, and now go find a way to become a better pilot. Music for today's episode is To Be an Angel by the Canadian band Uncle Seth. You can get more information and subscribe to the podcast feeds on the web at studentpilotcast.com. Remember, any instruction that you hear in this podcast was meant for me and for me alone in the situation I was in at the time. Please do not try to blindly apply anything you see or hear in this podcast to your own flying without thinking it through on your own completely. If you have questions about any aspect of your flying, please consult a qualified CFI.